It's the Daily Dog. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Daily Dog. Happy Friday. You made it to Friday. I uh, got my coffee here. And uh, I am ready to uh, dive into one of the more complex pieces that we've ever had on the channel. Uh, for the first time ever, we're doing Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and the song is Tarkus. So, uh, confession up front. <laughs> this is not going to be a true first reaction. I have heard the song before. It's been several years since I've heard the song. Uh, and I went back to spot check it a little last night, and I was like, <laughs> holy crap, <laughs> this is going to be... Uh, a challenge and actually I ended up finding a version of this that has the sheet music embedded in the video that we can follow along with and that's the one that I'm going to be uh, reacting to today or um, experiencing with you today uh, the as far as I can tell the uh, the studio recording, the original recording, is the recording that is used in this video. Uh, they've just, whoever they are, uh, has done a masterful job, looks like, with sort of um, laying out what the music is charted to look like, how they actually wrote it. And uh, it's, it's going to be great for us to be able to follow along with that. So it's going to take away the sort of novelty <laughs> of me trying to figure out what uh, the chords and keys are that they're doing because we can see in real time what they're doing. So it's going to be a little bit uh, easier for me, but it's going to allow us to really look into how they're conceiving of these ideas. And if you can read music, follow along. If you can't read music, follow along too. It'll sound the same, <laughs> right? So a little bit of backstory into this piece. Uh, uh, this is the second studio album. This is from the second studio album, and it is the name of the second studio album of the British band Emerson, Lake & Palmer. It was released in 1971. So it is celebrating its 50th anniversary next month. Um, it, a remarkable, remarkable piece of music. Uh, it is in seven parts. It is the entire first side of the album, Young Kids. That's when you had to flip the album over, and you, you never mind. Uh, uh, Keith Emerson on pretty much any keyboard instrument he can find, synthesizers, organs, piano, celesta, Hammond organ, church organ, uh, Greg Lake on vocals and uh, bass and guitars, uh, Carl Palmer on drums and percussion. Uh, Keith Emerson and Greg Lake share the writing credits on this, but I did do some reading that... Uh, um, that Carl Palmer was working on some uh, unique rhythms that he and, and Emerson sort of uh, collaborated on to start building the, the basis of this piece. Uh, I have a little bit of reading to do for you. I, found, I was trying to figure out what this song is about. It's a little complicated, y'all. Uh, but I found, this is from the, uh, the website Song Facts, and this is just some, some, um, some information about the piece from that website. It says, this song describes the story of a war machine called Tarkus. And uh, the Tarkus is a mixture between an armadillo and a tank. And the creature emerges from an egg uh, <laughs> that is beside a volcanic crater that is having an eruption. And then a, a cybernetic creature uh, that looks like a futuristic station uh, this creature uh, 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 fights Tarkus and is destroyed by Tarkus's turrets. Uh, after that comes a creature named Iconoclast. That's a mixture between a pterodactyl and a war uh, airplane. <laughs> and this creature, Iconoclast, battles but cannot compare to Tarkus and loses the battle. Uh, later, another creature appears named Mass, uh, who is a mixture of a lizard a lobster, and a rocket launcher. <laughs> and after a battle, Mass loses to Tarkus, and the Tarkus continues on its bloody adventure, right? And then after three victories, Tarkus is faced with a mythological creature named Manticore. And uh, Manticore is a creature that has a human face, uh, the lion, uh, a body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion. 
and Tarkus uh, faces Manticore, is stung in its eye, and uh, Manticore defeats Tarkus. Tarkus meets its demise, and uh, Tarkus's body falls down uh, next to a river. Uh, so in this, we get the adventures of Tarkus from its birth through several battles with other creatures, culminating in a losing battle with the Manticore, and then a sort of rebirth as the aquatic version of itself called Aquatarchus. <laughs> it's, it's fantastical to think about, uh, but it, it reminds me of, of uh, some classic classical works uh, like tone poems that are orchestral or large instrumental pieces that are built to tell some sort of story, normally a fable or mythological. Um, it reminds me quite a bit about that. It's just designed for uh, sort of a modern uh, set of instruments instead of a, a standard classical uh, symphony orchestra. Uh, it looks like the words came completely after the music was created. And the lyrics seem to be uh, sort of uh, moral commentaries about the action interspersed. Uh, so you have all this action that means all of these things with the Tarkus uh, uh, going into battle and battling these creatures. And then sort of in the middle of these where the lyric sections are, they're sort of uh, a stop in the action and social commentaries on the action that is taking place around it. And at the end, it's sort of referring to, referring to the futility of war. Remember, this is 50 years ago. Uh, some, with some of the other uh, early 70s uh, pieces that we've done on the channel, the Vietnam War rages on and looms large in uh, the background sort of construct and meaning of a lot of these really deep uh, sort of uh, human experience uh, sets of lyrics. So the lyrics refer to the futility of war, a man-made mess with assured mutual destruction, rife with hypocrisy, false promises, and injustice. Right, so a deep piece, and uh, these uh, musicians are are seminal. They are wonderful musicians, and they know what they're doing. And I, I, I can't believe I've talked this long and not got to this piece. It's 20 minutes long. We're in for the long haul. I'm wearing my best fly 70s uh, collar to pay homage to uh, my my good friends from the generation before me, and uh, we're gonna take a listen to. Tarkus by ELP with uh, embedded score. Y'all, are you ready? I'm ready. I need to have some more coffee. <laughs> mm. Okay, we're ready to go. Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Tarkus from Tarkus. Let's hit it. The double P means very soft. Gradual crescendo means it's getting louder. Sets up an F Dorian chord, F minor with a, a natural sixth. We're a minute and 36 seconds in, and literally I could talk for an entire hour about what we've just heard. Okay, I want to go back a little bit. We'll get to some more stuff, but I think if we can understand 
uh, the musical elements that they're bringing up here at the beginning, it's going to set up the rest of the piece for us to understand a little bit. So I'm going to talk through as much as I can this first little section again. Um, at the beginning, he's building up this sustained thing. I think it's meant to be everlasting, kind of the primordial soup. And he's picked Dorian Mode as the collection of pitches to, to work from. And I don't think that's by accident. So that F, uh, so F, G, uh, A flat, B flat, C, and D natural, the only one they haven't included is the E in that, which would be um, an E flat in that key. Um, historically, Dorian mode is one of the sort of power modes, historic modes. It's in a minor, it's a minor sound, but it's got sort of an optimistic major four chord with that natural sixth in there. Uh, and then as I'm looking at the lively section that says 5-4, um, but it could be counted in 10-8, it almost even looks like it should be in like 4 plus 3 plus 3 in 3, uh, but he doesn't have them beamed that way. So he's got it kind of just beamed in a standard 5. But if you look at all of the notes there, this is what I uh, was looking at last night, and finally it dawned on me what they're doing. Uh, this this stuff F B flat E flat B flat right and then you've got more B flats and E flats there the e, A flat above here these are all fourths he's building this section in uh, perfect force or uh, unequal force sometimes but check this out an F as a fourth up to a B flat up a fourth to an E flat up a fourth to the A flat, right? And then by the time we get back down to this B flat, it's a different kind of fourth, but it's still kind of a fourth. And then a parallel, a perfect force moving down there. And that sets up this uh, sort of uh, arrival on F as a key area, but he's using quartal harmony instead of tertiary or harmony or chords and thirds. Uh, it's really fascinating. It gives it a completely unique sound. <laughs> All fourths. And those seconds in there, that when you see a lot of seconds like that, it's also as something that can come from using the fourths. Watch this. That was cool, right? Check this out. So this is an A up to a D, a fourth higher, up to a G, a fourth higher, up to a C, a fourth higher. Right, so even the chords are moving uh, in sequential motion by fourths. The roots are moving by fourths, and all of these chords are the same uh, quality. This is an A major chord with a sharp eleven added eleventh, and this is a D major chord with an added sharp eleven. Again, G major sharp eleven, C major sharp eleven, and then it moves back in, and the C becomes dominant back into F as we continue this sequence. Holy cool. It sounds like it's in battle, right? Those fourths, he's using both as a consonant, right? But we are used to hearing them as dissonants. Look at these chords. Built in force. Force. Built in force here. All of these chords are portal chords. Chord, 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 choral chord. Finally ends on G as a dominant. But it's not. Well, actually, yeah, it is. Now he's in C. Similar ideas before, but moved to C instead of F. Little wedge motion. Totally cool. Contrary motion. a P as like a dominant sound, but it's not functioning that way.
Ha <laughs> ha. You may wonder how one person can play all of these pitches. So he's got pedal marked here, right? So both his left foot and his right foot are playing those. His left hand is sort of playing the notes in this octave, and then his right hand is gonna play the notes in that octave. Organists amaze me, the fact that they're like, <laughs> like octopuses, right? They, they, they play with all, with both hands and both legs. I, 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 um, I am amazed by our organist friends. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be that. So that first section was called eruption, right? So that's the uh, the Tarkus being um, birthed from its egg by uh, the side of this uh, volcano and then going into uh, battle with its first creature and it uh, succeeds, right? So it, once we get to the end here, we're gonna next be going into the section called Stones of Years. And this is the first section that has lyrics with it. So this D chord up through here sets up as a dominant to G, right? And it does melodically go there to this G, but the chord underneath it is a C. And this, I think, starts this next section. And uh, the cool thing is, is that we we know we're in C because of the way he's using the bass line here. C, down by step to B flat, down by step to A flat, and then you get six, two, five, one in C. And it sets up and he changes the key signature there to, to show us we're in E minor. Uh, the chords here, uh, just, just for fun, a C chord, up a fourth to an F chord, up a fourth to a B flat chord, up a fourth to an E flat chord. So even when he's using triads, he's using fourths as the way that these triads are connected. It's really remarkable. Uh, the um, uh, economy of means and the perspective from the composer in this. I'm very um, impressed with it. I'm backing up a hair and we're gonna start this next section. <laughs> That should go to G minor, but it goes to C minor instead. Tempo change, and we're now into the second section. Has the dawn ever seen your eyes? Have the days made you so unwise? Realize you are. There's a lot of space in his voice. It, it, it sounds so wonderful. Repeat. Back to the first part. Now this is cool. Watch these chords. Fourth, 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 fourth. Time, you'll see the sign and realize your sin, right? So this is the commentary on that um, war footing. Okay. If you've ever wondered what uh, or how a, a classically trained musician might um, notate a solo section, this is how. So you've got repeat here and repeat here. So this, these two uh, bars just keep repeating over and over again. They've said they're saying improvise ad lib over the pattern. So you got down by step then a flat. Just, just kind of a static uh, progression in C minor. The voicings of this also strike me as interesting. 
you look back at chords like this, it takes a big hand to play some of those voicings on the keyboard. Um, Emerson must have these very large hands for the voicings that he uh, can play. They're still going on this uh, two-part two pattern. The uh, the progressions are are uh, relatively uh, common practice, but the voicings uh, and some of the other stuff in here are just uh, completely uh, pushing the envelope. It's totally cool. Okay, Iconoclast, next section. Battle. So remember, Iconoclast is a mixture of a pterodactyl and a warplane. Is that Morse code? Again, fourths. Check out the voicings here. When he's going into battle, they're using all of these forts, all of this stuff in through here are still based on that same pattern of, of, of stacked forts. Like primordial conflict. The old school Hammond organ sounds completely unique to 21st century ears, right? There's, there's, there's no beating it. rhythmic patterns as before. Okay, now we're in the mass. The preacher said a prayer, save every single hair on his head. He's dead. Huh. A minister of hate had just arrived too late to be spared. Who cares? Who cares? The wheel in the back of the You can see so the chords good. above, that might be helpful. They're basically an A minor, they're going back and forth between uh, A is tonic and E is dominant. And then that's flat 6, flat 7, 1 to kind of come back to the main idea. Relatively simple section harmonically compared to the other uh, battle sections. So it looks like another solo section, but it hasn't been notated in the music that I'm seeing. section then I might 
made of five. The happiest to the play to bless the ones who played and all obeyed. The messenger of fear is slowly drawing nearer to the time. A sign. The weaver in the world that he made. Ah, up a step. Straight modulation. Up a step. In their silence, bring it in sound. Harmonic crowd. The weaver in the web he made. Okay. Next section. Magic horn. Okay, this is where. Tarkus meets his face. The, the Manticore has a human face, a lion's body, and a scorpion's tail. so I noticed something. You know how I've been saying uh, the entire time that there's a battle scene, that there are uh, uh, combinations of fourths, both melodically and how the, uh, the chords are moving? Well, check this out. That's changed all of a sudden, it, it just on, on this page. Uh, an open C, a fifth, to that fifth, to that fifth, to that fifth, up to that fifth, to that A flat and E flat fifth, to that D and A fifth down there, to that B flat and F fifth down there. So he's changing from uh, the sort of primordial growth of the fourth, and now it's become mature at the fifth. And uh, that may be uh, the change that uh, means that Tarkus has met its match uh, musically. Um, I, I don't think that it's by mistake that now in this section, a lot of the, the chord voicings, at least in the bass, in the left hand of the, of the keyboard, has moved from the span of a fourth to the span of a fifth. Um, that's just an interesting observation as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Take a look at that chord. So let's see, check the clefs. Yeah, so the bass notes are G flat. Cool. Um, we've got um, what clef are we in? That's a C flat and an A flat and a B flat next to that. It's so that looks to me like um, another sort of pattern of fourths or fifths. That could be just a quintal chord. Uh, I think it might be that's all just scrunched down in there uh, to give some. Uh, some uh, dissonance to that sound. And it looks like we have a percussion break and uh, let's keep rolling. I, Y'all, uh, we're almost 29, uh, 30 minutes into the vid to, to what I'm uh, uh, recording. I, um, uh, it's a long one. I knew it was gonna be a long one, but this song is worth it. We're a little more than halfway in. Uh, hang with me, just, just chill. We're gonna have a good time. So I read that this section is the only section where the music itself, yeah, and the words were by uh, Greg Lake. Everything else, the music is by Keith Anderson. 
So this is the aftermath of Tarkus losing its battle with the Manticore. Through the battle, let me see all the profit from our victory. Up a half step. Love being able to follow along with the notation. No, the leaves of summer turn their face. Down to four. Scattered on the ashes of this Down to one. Race. So this little... That's going to be the Neapolitan chord. Flat two. Woo! Right down to one and then five. Back to that sort of Dorian sound over E with those C sharps in there. Sounds like another solo section. It's not written in. I can just redoing this section just without the lyrics. Yeah. Just as an aside, I find it interesting that the only section written by the guitarist is in E minor. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm. Here's that step up to the F natural. Nice and down. Holy cool. They're keeping that E constant in all those chords, even though it doesn't really fit in the B chord. They're calling it a sus chord. That's that suspended chord above the B chord to keep that E in every or one of these chords in the progression. Also uh, helps draw back to the uh, um, the use of all the fourths at, at the beginning. Okay, last section, Aquatarchus. The bass scale is Mixolydian. The key signature is F minor, but he's got A naturals in the bass line. Not Mixolydian, because the D's are flat. little sequences just sort of are like ear candy for me. It, it's like, oh, cool, pattern, pattern. Get faster a little bit. Middle staff is almost completely in this ear. It's 
sounds like they programmed or pre-played the, the upper stuff. I can't believe that he's playing all of that uh, at the same time. Maybe he is. He's amazing. It's a march. Huh. So it's an underwater march? This is uh, the birth or the reimagining of Aquatarchus, the, uh, <laughs> the the aquatic version. Is it going to completely fade out? I got about a minute left. A little over a minute left. Okay. Going back to eruption on page four. Okay, this little symbol is where they go back to. Maybe this is the rebirth. Such a cool, cool theme, isn't it? Okay, now they're gonna get done with this section and go to the coda at the very end. That can't be it. Okay, go back. Go back. I gotta hear that again. Wow. Right. Sorry, I went back to the to a little bit of the ending here. That's a cool rhythm, y'all. So it goes to the end. Okay, not yet. Okay, here they go. What the hell kind of chord is that? Okay. In the bass, I'm looking up through here, right? That's the same chords through, and it's a little small and difficult for me to, to meet for me to see. Looks like F sharp, we've got a C sharp there, and then that's a let's see, let's see. Uh, F natural? That's interesting. And then a C sharp and an F sharp and then a C natural up there. So we've got a chord. We've got basically an F sharp chord or an F, the combination of an F sharp chord and an F chord with each other. F sharp, C sharp to F. Interesting. And then a C sharp to F sharp to a C natural. Those um, diminished octaves are uh, makes that sound as cool as it does and then i'm trying to look here at the end uh down here he's got the it resolves those f sharps resolve down by half step to f that happened before so that resolution of a half step down uh it also happened in that e minor section uh that we just got through on uh battlefield uh where we were in e we went up to f natural and we came back down to e uh but and then this little motive here C to F, and then uh, that's a motive that we've had before. And then there's a fermata. I was expecting that to hold on a little bit more, but they cut it off pretty quick. Uh, let's hear this ending little uh, 20 seconds or so. <laughs> And then 
you're done. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, me. That's, uh, I, I, I can understand why all of you have been uh, suggesting this piece. Uh, it's, it's quite wonderful. I hope that the, the trip through with that, with the, um, uh, with the music available, with the chart available for us to see, was helpful for you. Uh, it's definitely helpful for me. Maybe that was a bit of an insight for all of you to see how uh, people that uh, um, are trained in music, uh, when we have a recording and a score available to us, it uh, it's really is the quickest and best way to study and listen to music. If you're trying to, to um, sort of learn as much as you can about it on the first listen or the first couple listens, it really is helpful to see uh, how the musicians have chosen to chart their ideas by how they're beaming stuff together, where they put the bar lines, uh, whether they change the um, the key signature or not. <clears throat> All of these different notation decisions are, are part of the insight into uh, the type of questions, musical questions they were asking themselves and how they were answering those. <clears throat> it's a really, excuse me, yeah, you gotta have more coffee. My throat's been really scratchy the last few days. Pollen is going nuts around here right now. But um, I very much enjoyed that, y'all. Uh, what what next from ELP? Because we definitely need to do some more ELP on the channel. Let me know uh, what the next one should be, and we'll try to get it scheduled and in and. Uh, uh, included as soon as we can. I have a bunch of stuff on the list. Y'all have been so great with uh, suggesting <laughs> a whole bunch of songs. I will get to them. Uh, I'll try as hard as I can. I am very honored that you are interested in my opinion. Uh, I am happy to, to give it. So uh, that's all for today. What a wonderful, wonderful big time Friday episode. ELP Tarkas. Uh, we had a great time. Thanks y'all for being with me this week, and we'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.